Welcome to the US Daily News Channel. In the war in Ukraine, the Russian army made progress and successes in the Severodonetsk region, while the Ukrainian armed forces achieved very serious successes in Donetsk and Kherson against these successes. Currently, there is a serious conflict of dominance in these regions, but the Russian army cannot prevail in guerrilla warfare and the Russian army is having a hard time with the guerrilla experience and strategy of the Ukrainian army. In this way, the Ukrainian army is able to carry out regular all-out attacks against the lands occupied by the Russians by surprising them with guerrilla tactics. We constantly point out that the efficiency of the long-range weapons of the Russian army has decreased. The reason for this is that it cannot provide air dominance and most of its long-range missiles perform blind shots. But the situation of the Ukrainian armed forces is very different. The Ukrainian armed forces has distributed the weapons from the west to the regions and can use all of them in the most active way. From the legend of the war, Bayraktar TB2, to the M777 howitzer, many allied weapons are being used effectively in the region. After the Russian army captured the center of the Severodonetsk region yesterday and took 70% of it under control, the Ukrainian armed forces turned this into an opportunity and launched an all-out attack against the Russian army with guerrilla surprises, as we mentioned, and pushed the Russian troops back 15 kilometers on the front in Donetsk. Recent reports from the Ukrainian army reveal how the Ukrainian armed forces, along with Western weapons, are pushing the Russian army back. It was announced that the Ukrainian armed forces liberated three villages in the Donetsk region and pushed back the Russian front line by 15 kilometers. With this operation, which has been carried out in regions under Russian domination for a long time, the withdrawal of the Russian army is of great importance. The Ukrainian armed forces are not only defending in some areas of the Donbass, but are gradually advancing towards the Russians, the Ukrainian armed forces said in a statement. It is stated that the Russian army has an artillery advantage in the region, but the Ukrainian armed forces cope with it. Russia's biggest advantage in the region is its weapons arsenal, which is much larger than that of the Ukrainian armed forces. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces continues to gradually liberate the occupied areas in Kherson, which is seen as the key to the war. The village of Tavryuska, a settlement in the Kherson region, is now under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. The news of the liberation of the village was given by the president of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky. Today, the village of Tavryuska joins the list of liberated settlements in our country. There are also certain achievements in the Zaporizhia region. Fierce clashes continue on the streets of Severodonetsk. I am proud of our defenders, men and women, who managed to stop the advance of these hostile people, these invaders for weeks, and keep our defense strong," Zelensky said. We need to lean a little more on Kherson and elaborate on this issue. Kherson actually serves as Russia's current land bridge to Crimea, and most Russian shipments originate from this area. But when the Ukrainian armed forces began a counter-offensive in Kherson two weeks ago, Putin became deeply fearful and even sent some reinforcements to Kherson. Because the Ukrainian armed forces started to gain the upper hand in these attacks and continues to advance in Kherson. Unlocking Kherson is the last thing Putin wants. Because the Crimean Peninsula, which it held before the invasion and was annexed by Russia, is in a very strategic position for Russia. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in his statements about the region that they wanted to liberate Crimea at the end of the war and connect it to Ukraine. Ukraine's defense ministry said on Friday it carried out airstrikes on Russian military positions in the Kherson region in southern Ukraine. Kyiv is trying to take back the city on the Black Sea with a counterattack. Our aircraft carried out a series of attacks on enemy bases, equipment and personnel gathering places and field depots around five different settlements in the Kherson region, the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense said in a statement. Another important point of the occupation of Kherson is the coast of the city to the Black Sea. We'll delve into this topic in more depth in a moment. Because there is not much good news for the Russians in the Black Sea. Kherson, just north of the Crimean Peninsula, was the first city Russian forces captured after launching the February 24 invasion. 
The Russians take action to quickly assimilate Kherson into Russia. Kherson provides Moscow with an important land bridge between Russia's annexed Crimea and the Russian proxy separatist-held territories in Donbass. It should also be remembered that this land bridge played an important role in the occupation of the Ukrainian cities of Melitopol, Berdyansk and Mariupol. This is the secret behind Kherson being the first occupied city. Be sure, if Russia had been able to bring down Kharkiv so quickly, similar problems could have arisen in Kiev. Since the Russians took Kherson, they have established a puppet government, cut off news and the internet except for official Russian propaganda, placed Russian teachers in schools, and forced citizens to use Russian rubles. While Russia is implementing a heavy assimilation operation in the region, the puppet government under Kherson invites Moscow to annex the region as a part of Russia. This is a planned process and it is stated that 2023 is expected for this to happen. The deputy head of the military administration established by Russia said in a statement that the Kherson region is a Russian territory and there will not be a referendum here, the Kherson territory will be connected to Russia. The method used by the Kremlin on Kherson actually reminds of the method it wants to apply on all Ukrainian borders. The campaigns, carried out by Russia's multi-faceted efforts, reveal a vision of a subjugated, Russified Ukraine. The Kremlin has now decided to try this first in Kherson. However, in the future, these practices can be implemented in many regions. The Kremlin seeks to advance Kherson's plan to replace the democratic government, free press and civil society with a Kremlin-style police state that humiliates and brutalizes local populations, abusing and kidnapping human rights. It is stated that this has been the most fundamental part of Putin's plan from the beginning. If the invasion on February 24 had succeeded, Putin would have put a Russian puppet leader in charge of Kiev, accelerating the heavy assimilation efforts in the country and Russifying the country. When we remember Putin's statements before the invasion, we remember that Putin saw Ukraine as a Russian province and stated that the people living in Ukraine were Russians. Like the Donbass, the plan to set up a separatist government in Kherson and launch certain revolts with mercenaries is still kept secret. At the same time, according to Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shaigu, Russian forces reportedly repaired the 750-mile railway line to facilitate full-fledged traffic flowing from Russia to the Donbass. While Russia's pressure on the Donbass continues, a Russia expert warned about Russia's plan to spread its aggression to Europe. This is a very serious and real issue. In fact, this was to be expected in the first days of the invasion, and it looked like Russia would turn its target to other Eastern European countries soon after taking control of Ukraine. However, this did not happen or was delayed due to the failure of Putin's plan. Russian President Vladimir Putin raised the alarm about his forward-looking military intentions this week when the monarch invoked the legacy of Peter the Great. The famous Russian Tsar, who reigned from 1682 to 1725, led a series of successful wars, notably helping to establish the country as a major international power. In the continuation of these statements, he explained that Peter the Great had waged the Northern War for 21 years and was at war with Sweden. He legitimized the invasions carried out by Peter the Great and said, what is Russia's has returned to Russia. He claimed that Russia is facing the same problems today and that Russia is acting to take back what is his. This was a terrible claim, and it made Putin re-voicing his Soviet dream. Reactions poured in from the West to Putin's speech. The British government mocked Putin by saying he lived in the 18th century. Burning with the dream of the Soviet Union, Putin is expected to turn his route from Lviv to other Eastern European countries that left the Soviet Union if Ukraine falls. For this reason, the defense of the glorious Ukrainians is not only of Ukraine but of all Europe. We hope that the defense of Ukraine against the Russian army and all-out attacks will find their target and Ukraine will regain its freedom and territorial integrity.